So here we are in the ghost at the uh, drag strip in Fontana. These two things don't go together too often, but here we are, so let's take advantage of it. I'm gonna do an acceleration run. This car has a 6.6 .6 liter twin turbo V12 with 563 horsepower. It's a lot of power, but this is a lot of car. So let's see how it does. Hold the brake, give it a little throttle, and go. And 60 is 4.4. And the quarter is a 12.8 at 113.1 miles per hour. So now we're going to try a brake stop from 60 miles per hour. This car weighs 5,500 pounds. That's a lot. Ready? Hold on. Boom. That was uh, 112 feet. Not too bad. So now we're in the Bentley Flying Spur. And this car is powered by a 6-liter twin turbocharged W12 engine. Uh, making 616 horsepower, a lot of power. So we're gonna bring the revs up, and there we are, and then boom, off we go. And 60 was 4.3 seconds. Okay, that's a 12.9 at 107. So not quite as good a quarter mile uh, performance as the rolls, but a, a better zero to 60. Not bad, 106 feet. That's a bit better than the rolls was. figure eight in the flying spur and I'm slowly building up speed. This car has all-wheel drive and nominally it's a 60-40 front rear split but it can vary more dramatically than that. It has uh, paddle shifts. They seem a little bit slow in responding though. Really getting the rear end working well. Uh, drifted out a bit there. The car is really kind of understeering. You know, this isn't really a lot of fun with this car because I feel like I'm really hurting the tires. It's such a heavy car. So it does the figure eight in 26.2 seconds. So here we are about to figure eight the uh, Ghost. And uh, let's see if it has a ghost of a chance of beating the Bentley. So it'll do the figure eight in 27.1 seconds. A lot of nosedive, a lot of roll. Whoa, Nelly, yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry back there, passengers. The chauffeur has lost his mind. So we're here now in the Bentley Flying Spur in uh, Santa Monica, California, which is, uh, you see the ocean out there and the beach, and it's absolutely gorgeous, those palm trees, very California setting. We've had a chance to drive this and the rolls in a lot of different environments, at the test track and, and windy roads, various environments now. The interior of this car, I think, is really quite attractive. Uh, the materials, the woods here are gorgeous. Uh, the taste, the stitching, the detailing, I think is all really nice. It's got these uh, organ stops for the, uh, the open and close the vents. A lot of the other controls are a little bit more ordinary looking. They don't look like they're from a quarter of a million dollar car. They look like they're from an expensive luxury car for sure. Uh, the seats are comfortable. The gauges are a little, again, uh, you know, it could be from any sort of English German car. It's an edgy automobile dis despite its size. Um, but I, there's a few things I could criticize about its vehicle dynamics. Uh, the ride, even at, in its softest setting, it's, it's firm at times, so impacts come through. These are uh, 21 inch wheels. I think the biggest criticism I have of this car is how different is it really than uh, an extreme Audi, for instance, uh, in terms of its driving experience. That I'm not so sure about. And yeah, it does have a lot of power, but again, the throttle response is a little bit slow, a little bit sluggish. The sound of the engine accelerating is not entirely pleasant to hear. It's a little bit of vibration from time to time, surprisingly. So is it an Uber Audi um, or a Bentley? Well, it drives a little bit like an Uber Audi, frankly. Well, as if I have to tell you, uh, we're now on the Rolls-Royce Ghost, and uh, it's just a beautiful interior in here. Uh, magnificent and there's so many cues about Rolls-Royce history 
um, all of the wood magnificently done. Uh, this wood, by the way, uh, all comes from the same tree, all of the wood inside, so that when it ages, uh, it all darkens in, in the same way. You don't end up with different colors of wood over time. The steering wheel is, has a thin rim, and there's a few drivers of this car who've complained about it, but actually, to me, it does remind me of the classic Rolls Royces. They were like this, and uh, so it doesn't compromise in that regard to try to be something else. It gives you the feeling of, of you're almost your own chauffeur, because it is fun to drive. There is a pleasure here. I mean, it's not a sporty car at all, obviously, but it, it, there's a strange pleasure about it. It's, it's nice. This car is to celebrate the Alpine Trials victory in 1913 by a Rolls Royce. And if you're into that stuff, it's fun. Otherwise, you end up with a car that has a $41,000 paint job that is probably the wrong color in the first place. Uh, the black rail is kind of interesting because it's, this is apparently the only production rolls that's ever been built that has a black rail where they've, it's a different color. There's a, a topography description of the, uh, the route, of the up and down of the going over the hills and whatnot. So this little clock here uh, tells the time, but it also has a lot of little markings on it that I don't understand. And they relate somehow or another to that, that event 100 years ago. Although it's magnificently built, here and there, there are little bits of plastic that are pretending to be something else. I'm a little critical of that. For, for that kind of money, I would expect every absolute thing that it looks like aluminum is aluminum or something else, and it isn't 100% that way. And, and I would hope for a little bit higher standard in that regard, but it's hard to knock it. I mean, look around. This is magnificent. Uh, the driving experience of this car is is just unique. I mean, I, I don't, there, to say there isn't, there is absolutely not another car on the road that drives like a Rolls Royce. You know, when you picture what's a Rolls Royce like to drive, this, it, it's exactly that. I mean, it's exactly what you, you might be imagining, other than it has a lot more power than I would have thought. Welcome, gentlemen. Oh, hello. How are you today? Thank you. So I'll be your chauffeur. You're in the uh, Rolls Royce. Okay, so you two are, are, are resident experts on Rolls Royces, correct? Yes, Kim. This is the first time I've been in a Rolls Royce. <laughs> the first time you've yes. been in a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Which makes me a complete expert. <coughs> huh. Okay, how about you, Derek? Uh, I w I'm confess I've been in one before. I was, the best, I was best man at a wedding. I can't even, um, I wouldn't be able to tell so you what the it. model was. That's so it. that's it. So that's you're, it. you're not experts. Do you know how to close the door? Um, is the chauffeur? With, the chauffeur? Does the chauffeur do that? Well, you guys have to do it. Okay. But here's how you do it. There's a button behind that pillar right there. Oh, I see, yeah. And, and just hold that button down. Okay. There you go. Oh. Now here's some other things. Uh, uh, pull down the armrest. There. Yeah. Oh, hang on a minute. So what's in there? Oh, wow. That's pretty nice. Yeah, okay. So you can adjust your seat. Seat controls, yes. Oh okay. yeah, moving. You can yeah. do all kinds of things. So we're going to go for a little ride now. Well, uh, it's very years. smooth. I can't even hear any engine. You can't hear the engine. Ellen, have you been allowed near a Rolls Royce before? Well, I, the last time I saw a uh, Rolls Royce was it probably did have the Queen in it. Did have the Queen? Yes, <laughs> when, I, when I was about 10 years old. Really? Yes, she opened a garbage uh, incineration <laughs> uh, complex near where I lived. Wow. Well, here's the thing for me. This leather, I think, was made from a cow with such a great uh, complexion that it looks like plastic. Yeah, and, and the wood refinement is, is very nice. I don't know if that's walnut. I'm not sure what it is, or ash. Plywood. Could be. So these, uh, we've got some TVs or something back here. What's going on? Yeah. Is that uh, not a TV? No, it's not a TV. It's a tray. Oh, yeah. With a really smooth Waiting mechanism. Waiting for the uh, filet mignon. Uh, well, Darren, you say it's well made, but have a look at these little uh, climate control uh, sort of regulators here, sliders. They, they, Mm. They're almost plastic. Mm. In fact, they are plastic. Lacking a bit of weight, aren't they? Yeah. Really, a bit of quality. It just seems cheap. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they ran out of money after they put the carpet in. Yeah, maybe they did. Yeah, I can't say I'm too impressed by this uh, covering on, on, the, on the roof. It's kind of perforated, which is what's actually on my father's very first Ford that he bought. 
Oh, that was a thing, yeah. That was always a thing, yeah. It is, Like yeah. Ford Granada or something like that. Yeah. With a and dodgy it, roof with some yeah, stains it on. it seems cheap, doesn't it? How's the sound system? Oh, the sound system. This is what the Queen does. I didn't know I that. You knew that. No. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder where you guys are from. It's been a long time <laughs> since I've been back. <laughs> thumbs up or thumbs down? I mean, predominantly thumbs up. I mean, I knew in these modern times we would we would suffer the the plastic disease, you know. Yeah. Kind I, of creeps I'm, in. I'm disappointed, Kim. I am disappointed. I was expecting a lot more. Okay, so now you're in the Bentley. Okay. And away we go. But it's, it's definitely more firmer, I think. It and is a firmer ride. It's narrow. I feel na I feel like there's. I'm feeling. Yeah. Like I'm in a, a smaller corridor. Yeah, it feels less sumptuous in here for sure. So, yeah. this is basically like a little iPhone, isn't it? So did you try the massage? Uh, I've, made, I've made some happen there. We need there a back to back, so to speak, comparison of the massage. Oh, yes. So, you know, you like Have you got back. a massage? Yeah, it's in the small of my back, now coming up to around the shoulders area. Oh, that's very nice. Oh, there's a little mini fridge in here. Oh, this is very nice. Okay. Yeah, oh, I seem to have some, uh, some oh. beverages. Old crafted hen. Vintage ale. Is there any glasses? Yeah. You're supposed to drink it out of the bottle. That's a bit unsophisticated, isn't it? <laughs> right. How do we like this wood? The darker. Uh... Yeah, I've never been a fan of uh, walnut. I think it really dates it. No, it just it doesn't seem very contemporary. I'm kind of liking the creamy leather, though. I imagine it might get. And hey, what about the ride quality? The, the sound level. I can feel the road. I feel the road a bit more for sure. Yeah, it, it we're not flying. We're not flying anymore. I met a bloke in a bar the other night. He says, I was telling him I might be doing this, and he says, you get driven in a Rolls Royce and you drive a Bentley. Yeah, I could believe that. Uh, roll of winds for me, for sure. Yeah, I would say so. Yes, I I think the Bentley looks better, sleeker, but I think the Rolls Royce definitely wins on sheer luxury. We took both cars out late one night to determine their interior noise and ride quality. Using a seat accelerometer, the Bentley registered 35% more vibration than the Rolls. It was noisier too at 66.1 dBA or 23.9 zones compared to the Rolls' 63.8 dBA or 21.6 zones. It's a significant difference and further underlines the superiority of the Rolls. One of the reasons we've come here as well is we wanted to actually gauge, measure uh, how many people look at this car and also the Rolls Royce. Okay, so we're doing our, our facial image recognition as we pass people here and I see a lot of people along the sidewalk. Um, so far, no looks that I've noticed. No, nothing there. Uh, boy, there's a lot of people right here. We're by the Third Street Promenade, and there's people walking in front of us. I'm looking to see if anybody is looking at this car. And this is a quarter of a million dollar automobile, a Bentley. Um, that guy is asleep. They're both asleep uh, on the bench. Um, nothing there. Yeah, that guy, he did. All right, I think I saw one guy look, glanced in our direction. I'm surprised at the, the lack of reaction to this car. Uh, maybe it's just not, you know, spectacular looking enough uh, in this environment where these people are really used to seeing Ferraris and Lamborghinis and all kinds of stuff. And this might be a little too subdued for them. But we've seen a few glances. Now, 
you know, to some degree, I think that that does relate to the styling of this car. Um, I think it's a handsome car, and I like a lot of its details and elements about the, the exterior, the grille, the tail, I think is beautifully sculpted. Um, it is a little stretched in the middle and a little lumpy in the middle, and uh, a colleague has described it as looking a little bit like a hot pocket. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really interesting that I think we, we think of cars like this as, as a vehicle that you, want, you expect to be seen in. I mean, it's a lot of money to spend to not be noticed. Okay, well, now we're going to move on to the Rolls-Royce and see how, how it does on these roads and how people react to it. It's a bright color, uh, much more interesting car visually, and we'll see what happens. We've had people already taking a picture, uh, many people looking, some thumbs up, some much more positive reactions. Now, this is kind of an unfair competition because you've got this crazy color on this car and these funny looking wheels and everything. And the, uh, the Bentley is really kind of a dour, quiet uh, color. So there's a big color advantage going here. Which car is the better eye candy? Over the same course, the results were lopsided. In the Bentley, 9 out of the 90 people we passed looked at it, 10%, and 2 even turned around for a better look. In the Rolls, 18 out of 95 stared at it, 19%, 11 of them turning around. In addition, 2 even took photos. The overwhelming winner of the eye candy test, the Ghost.